Welcome to the House of the Transfiguration this evening. All the responses when to stand and sit will be on the screen. Traditionally, there are some long periods of standing in the service, but if you're unable to stand for that uh, period of time, feel free if you need to sit down, uh, and uh, please feel more than free to do so. Please fill out one of the contact cards if you get a chance and drop it in the black offering baskets at the back before you leave. There will be coffee and snacks after the gathering in the kitchen area just outside of the sanctuary area. If you would please stand for the opening sign. Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Dear friends, this water will be used to remind us of our baptism. Let us ask God to bless it and to keep us faithful to the spirit we have been given. God, creator of all life, of body and soul, we ask you to bless this water as we use it in faith to forgive our sins and save us from all illness and the power of evil. God, in your mercy, give us a living water, always springing up as a fountain of salvation. Free us, body and soul, from every danger and admit us to your presence in purity of heart. Grant us this through Christ our Lord. God, we ask you to bless the salt as you once blessed the salt scattered over the water by the prophet Elisha. Wherever the salt and water are sprinkled, drive away the power of evil and protect us always by the presence of your Holy Spirit. Grant us this through Christ our Lord. May God cleanse us of our sins, and through the Eucharist we celebrate and make us worthy to sit at the table in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Lord, have mercy. 
Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, our loving parent, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the splendor of creation, in the beauty of human life. Touched by your hand, our world is holy. Help us to cherish the gifts that surround us, to share your blessings with our brothers and sisters, and to experience the joy of life in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Be established in faith and overflow with thanksgiving just as you were taught. See to it that nobody enslaves you with philosophy <coughs> and foolish deception which conform to human traditions and the way the world thinks and acts rather than Christ. All the fullness of deity lives in Christ's body, and you have been filled by him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. You were also circumcised by him. This wasn't performed by human hands. The whole body was removed through the circumcision by Christ. You were buried with him through baptism and raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead because of the things you had done wrong, and because your body wasn't circumcised, God made you alive with Christ and forgave all the things you had done wrong. He destroyed the record of the dead we owed with its requirements that worked against us. He canceled it by nailing it to the cross. When he disarmed the rulers and authorities, he exposed them to public disgrace by leading them in a triumphal parade. So don't let anyone judge you about eating or drinking or about a festival, a new moon observance, or Sabbaths. These religious practices are only a shadow of what was coming. The body that casts the shadow is Christ. Don't let anyone who wants to practice harsh self-denial and worship angels rob you of the prize. They go into detail about what they have seen in visions and have become unjustifiably arrogant by their selfish way of thinking. They don't stay connected to the head. The head nourishes and supports the whole body through the joints and ligaments, so the body grows with the growth that is from God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus told them, when you pray, say, Father, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom. Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive everyone who has wronged us, and don't lead us into temptation. He also said to them, Imagine that one of you has a friend, and you go to that friend in the middle of the night. Imagine saying, Friend, loan me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine on a journey has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. Imagine further that he answers from within the house, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up to give you anything. I assure you, even if he wouldn't get up and help because of his friendship, he will get up and give his friend whatever he needs because of his friend's brashness. And I tell you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Everyone who asks receives. Whoever seeks finds. To everyone who knocks, the door is opened. Which father among you would give a snake to your child if the child asked for a fish? If a child asked for an egg, what father would give the child a scorpion? If you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, you may be seated. <clears throat> Welcome everyone to the first preview gathering of the House of the Transfiguration. We are a new church start of the old Catholic Church of the Americas, and it's so wonderful to be with all of you and to be having you here for our first gathering. You are here for the beginning of something special. Some people have asked us why we would start a new church when there are already so many churches around. They've asked why we don't attend one of the other churches in the neighborhood that welcome women and lesbian, gay, bisexual, and or transgender folks. But there are those of us who have been longing for a Catholic church, for the Catholic tradition that moves and feeds us in an environment where all are considered to be valued and loved by God without reservation. So as a congregation, we will follow the lectionary. The lectionary is a system of readings that assigns a reading for each week, generally one from the Hebrew scriptures, a psalm, one from the Newer Testament, and a reading for the gospel. The idea is that the Church Universal will be reading the same texts each week. And since we have our gatherings on Tuesday, we will follow the, the text chosen for the coming Sunday. So when I first read the text that was assigned for today, I was struck by the ending verses. Which parent among you would give a snake to your child if the child asked for a fish? If a child asked for an egg, what parent would give the child a scorpion? If you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly parent give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? I want to acknowledge that it's always tricky to talk about parents. Many of us have had difficult relationships with our families. We have experienced rejection or neglect, abuse or disinterest. For many of us, the idea of a good parent is hard to wrap our minds around. We have experienced parents who have given us snakes and scorpions. And we've also experienced a mother church that has done the same. For years, we have been asking the church for bread, for fish, for fellowship and communion, and instead we've been turned away. Some of us have been turned away because we are gay, lesbian, bisexual, and or transgender. Some of us have been turned away because we have children who are LGBT or because we are divorced or use birth control. We have been longing for good gifts and instead have been given scorpions. In this passage from Luke, Jesus tells the story of a man who goes to his friend's house in the middle of the night looking for bread for a guest. His friend initially turns him away because it's late and the kids are in bed, but the man just stands outside and keeps knocking. Eventually, the friend has to open the door, even if it's just to keep the man from waking up the kids, and he gives him what he asks for. 
And Jesus' instructions to those listening are to keep knocking until you gain entry. And I can appreciate that message. So many of the gains that we have made as a church and as a country have been because of the people who have refused to stop knocking in the face of injustice. And at the same time, I wonder, well, what happens when the door doesn't open? What happens when we ask and we are silenced? How do we care for our spiritual needs in the face of a church that doesn't seem to want us? Marcella Althus Reed is a bisexual Latina theologian. She worked in the poor communities in Buenos Aires, and in her book, The Queer God, she writes, there are many sexual dissenters whose theological community is made up of the gathering of those who go to gay bars with rosaries in their pockets, or who make camp chapels of their living rooms simply because there is such a cry in their lives, and a theological cry which refuses to fit life into different compartments. I love this image of people who go to gay bars with rosaries in their pockets who cling to God in the midst of a world that tells them that they are less than. We are a people who have sometimes created communities in the shadows in order to, in order to get our needs met. Where we've tried to go it alone with just our rosary in our pocket, a private chapel in our bedroom, and a longing for a community where we can bring all of who we are. Some have asked us, and will continue to ask, so are you a gay Catholic church? And the answer is no. And yes, no, we don't exist just for the LGBT community. In fact, that's not even our primary focus. But this will be a church that takes seriously the lives and stories of people on the margins. And that includes the LGBT community. This will be a church that tells the stories of LGBT people from the pulpit and allows LGBT people and families full access to the life of the church. But we also understand that it's not only LGBT people who have experienced marginalization. It's also women, people of color, people who are disabled, people who are in poverty. And we will center the lives of those on the margins because that marginalization has a deep effect, not just on the people who have been marginalized, but on all of society. See, in the midst of rejection from the church and society, some of us have internalized that rejection. And we begin to think of ourselves as unworthy. We begin to think that maybe God doesn't love us. Maybe there isn't a place for us in the church. And it seems like everywhere we turn, that message is reinforced. And yet there is something within us that doesn't allow us to stop looking for the religious community that we long for. It's in the midst of these worlds that House of the Transfiguration is born. We are a community that values the ancient practice of the Catholic Church. We treasure the ritual and the liturgy, the art and the icons, the bread and the wine. And we also treasure a modern practice that reflects the lives of ourselves and our families. We treasure a space where gay, lesbian, bisexual, and or transgender people are welcome and affirmed as good. We treasure a community where women can be ordained and live out their gifts. We treasure a space that allows people to have agency over their own bodies and decisions, and a space that honors relationships and the ending of relationships in all of their complexity. But this community isn't formed simply as a reaction to unwelcoming spaces. It is also formed out of the belief that we have something to offer our community. At House of the Transfiguration, our tagline is transformed people transforming Minneapolis. By being in community with one another, we believe that we will be personally transformed. First, we believe that it is in community that we know ourselves to be beloved children of God. Father Gregory Boyle, who works with former gang members in Los Angeles, says this in his book, Tattoos on the Heart. I was brought up and educated to give assent to certain propositions. God is love, for example. You concede God loves us, and yet there is a lurking sense that perhaps you aren't fully a part of the us. The arms of God reach to embrace, and somehow you feel yourself just outside God's fingertips. Then you have no choice to but, but to consider that God loves me. And yet you spend much of your life unable to shake off what feels like God, only embracing you begrudgingly and reluctantly. I suppose if you insist, God has to love me too. And then who can explain this next moment? When the utter fullness of God rushes in on you. When you completely know the one in whom you live and move and have your being, as St. Paul writes. 
You see then that it has been God's joy to love you all along. I want to say that last line again. It has been God's joy to love you all along. What a message. And it's one that so many people need to hear. But it doesn't stop there. Because once we see that we have internalized that love, once we know or are in the midst of discovering that we are beloved by God, then we begin to catch God's vision for the world. A world where all people know they are loved. A world where all people have enough to eat and are secure. A community where there is justice for the most marginalized. And once we catch that vision, then we cannot help but want to work to bring that world about. We are a people transformed who in turn transform our city. In the beginning of this gospel passage, the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. And it's like they're asking, teach us what you care about. Teach us what issues are closest to your heart. And Jesus' concerns are earthy. For God to bring about God's kingdom. For there to be enough to eat. For the forgiveness of debts. The translation that we read of Luke talks about sins being forgiven. But in the earliest translations, they have the word debts. These are monetary debt. This prayer seems incredibly relevant to the world that we live in with food security on the rise with debts for students and others growing out of control. And these are the things that Jesus tells us to pray about. These are the things that Jesus tells us to be concerned about, the welfare of the people we are blessed to be surrounded by. See, it's not that we're required to work for justice in order to earn God's favor, but it's because we have seen ourselves to be beloved children of a loving God that we are inspired to work for justice. We are transformed, and so we want to transform the world around us to reflect the love we know. And my hope is that that impulse for justice becomes the heartbeat of this community, a community which is nourished and strengthened by the ritual of the Mass, and then from that strength goes out into a sometimes hostile world and proclaims loudly that we and everyone else are beloved. May it be so. Now, if you'll stand, we'll join together in the profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right to give thanks to the Lord our God. God, all-powerful and ever-living, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. All things are of your making. All times and seasons obey your laws. But you chose to create people in your own image, setting us over the whole world in all its wonder. You made people the stewards of creation to praise you day by day for the marvels of your wisdom and power through Jesus Christ our Lord. We praise you, Lord, with all the angels in their song of joy. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We come to you, God, with praise and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Son, your Son. Through Jesus, we ask you to accept and bless these gifts we offer in sacrifice. We offer them for your holy Catholic Church. Watch over it, Lord, and guide it. Grant it peace and unity throughout the world. We offer them for all who hold and teach the faith that comes to us from the apostles. Remember, Lord, your people, especially those for whom we now pray. Remember all of us gathered here before you. You know how firmly we believe in you and dedicate ourselves to you. We offer you the sacrifice of praise for ourselves and for those who are dear to us. We pray to you, our living and true God, for our well-being and redemption. In union with the whole church, we honor Mary, the ever-Virgin Mother of Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. We honor Joseph, her husband, and the apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, and all the saints. May their merits and prayers gain us your constant help and protection. God, accept this offering from your whole family. Grant us your peace in this life and count us among those you have chosen. Bless and approve our offering. Make it acceptable to you in offering in spirit and in truth. Let it become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. The day before he suffered, he took bread in his sacred hands, and looking up to heaven, to you, his almighty parent, he gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God, we celebrate the memory of Christ, your Son. We, your people and your ministers, recall his passion, his resurrection from the dead and his ascension into glory. And from the many gifts you have given us, we offer to you, God of glory and majesty, the holy and perfect sacrifice, the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation. 
Look with favor on these offerings and accept them as you once accepted the gifts of your servant Abel, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the bread and wine offered by your priest Melchizedek. Almighty God, we pray that your angel may take this sacrifice to your altar in heaven. And then as we receive from this altar the sacred body and blood of your Son, let us be filled with every grace and blessing. Remember, Lord, those who have died and have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, especially those for whom we now pray. May these and all who sleep in Christ find in your presence light, happiness, and peace. For ourselves, too, we ask some share in the fellowship of your apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Lucy, Agnes, Celia, Anastasia, and all of the saints. Though we are sinners, we trust in your mercy and love. Do not consider what we truly deserve, but grant us your forgiveness through Christ our Lord. Through him you give us all these gifts. You fill them with life and goodness. You bless them and make them holy. Through him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, Lord, from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to God's Supper.
Let us pray. Lord, we receive the sacrament which celebrates the memory of the death and resurrection of Christ, your Son. May this gift bring us closer to our eternal salvation. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May God bless you, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, if you'll stand.
<laughs> Back to work? <laughs> you too. Thank you so much for coming. Of course. He's still loving me. Interesting plan, I'm assuming. Okay. Yeah. I've got to come in. I know, I need to. I haven't been. I, you know what? I got an iPad. So I've been oh, I saw e-books this. Instead of. And it's. I love it. I I got one. You know, mix the casual or the modern location yeah. and yeah. Yeah, we'll do something. Yes, I already pre-ordered it. The new one, right? She's phenomenal. She's a talent star. Yeah, 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 I know. So, um, if you have a she's so hurt. So um, if you Oh, cool. Yeah. But if you get a chance, I'll show you. Yeah. I've already went through that. Nice. Oh, that's so, awesome. but she gets to see right in. So, yeah. 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 Well, well then, call me first. Yes. Yes. My number? yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. You too. Hey. Did you know the ELC minister from Denver? She was speaking at Mr. Seminary this week. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. I've been gone. I'm working this summer, so I haven't been okay. at the conference. Okay. okay. Thanks for coming. I know what's going on. Okay. I'm working at the Joint Religious Center. Thanks for coming. Awesome. It's been awesome. So when did you move on? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I gotta cooperate. I, I gotta, I gotta be a team. No. I'm a second time. You're dead. But, but, but in a men's court. So, I'm not, I only have one person. You need to stop. Sometimes you get the men's like, no. I'm like, second time. You wouldn't tell me. I feel like that's a good, let's get a promote. Get to that, and then they can say the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you're still not sleeping. Give me two balls. He's been working. He's been working. Oh, yeah. He's been working. He's been working. He's been working. Yeah. He's a pretty easy. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty regular. I still yeah. wouldn't mind getting him eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every once in a while, yeah. at least. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. How are you doing? Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Brad's got a job at Justin. Oh, that's fantastic. Did he start yet? Okay. Yes. I was here. Cool. And you like it? Yeah. I've never been to Jets, and I've heard good things about it, but. Hmm. Not really, but it wasn't bad enough that I 